All right, let's bring in Andy McCarthy, former assistant U.S. attorney to Fox News contributor, to talk about what we have seen so far in this hearing as they take a short, what I imagine is a bathroom break, which means it'll probably last five minutes or so. Jonathan Turley uh, laid out the importance of having this inquiry, Andy, uh, at the beginning of this in his opening statement. Let's play just a little bit of that, and we'll get you to react on the other side. We don't have it, apparently. Uh, okay, so... Let's uh, ask you then about the importance of this impeachment inquiry, one that the Democrats well, are, are trying at, at every turn to try to discredit. Yeah, I, I think, John, that Jonathan laid it out eloquently as, as we heard it, which is that there's a lot of serious misbehavior. He takes the position, and I think there's a lot of support for this, that you're not at a point where it would be appropriate to file articles of impeachment. Mm -hmm. But... The behavior that uh, we know the outlines of to this point is sufficiently serious that it cries out that it's the Congress's obligation uh, as the constitutional body that checks uh, executive branch abuse to investigate this. Uh, and that's the whole point. That's the point of having this inquiry. I, I think also it's pretty typical, even though the, the Democrats have acted like this is the first time this has ever happened. It's pretty typical at the beginning of an impeachment inquiry, in the early stages of it, uh, to have uh, experts come in and explain what the function of the impeachment power in the Constitution is, which, which uh, Jonathan and Professor uh, Gerhardt have both done, and then a broad outline of uh, some of the important parts of the evidence. So you have a forensic accountant there who can talk about the financial records, you have a former Justice Department official who's very uh, familiar with how the tax division works, uh, and that goes to the heart of the question whether there was an obstruction by the Biden Justice Department uh, of the Biden influence peddling investigation. So I think this is pretty normal for what you would see at the beginning of an inquiry. Um, Andy, I think, and John, I think you were trying to call for this. It was Jonathan Turley's opening statement. Listen. These are constitutional moments that demand the best from each of us. It calls for solemnity and clarity for members. These are important issues, and I think they're close issues. And I think some of these issues really do gravitate in favor of the president. So I would simply say that this is a moment where members and citizens can't stand together without prejudging the evidence. I don't know. Do you think that's happening, Andy? <laughs> well, no, it's not. But... He's quite right that it should. And actually, Sandra, if you think about it, the way the framers designed this uh, is it kind of make, was to try to make sure that this is the way it happens. Because we all know that even though you can return articles of impeachment in the House, you can vote them by a simple majority, a, a president can't be impeached, removed, and disqualified absent a two thirds supermajority in the Senate. And the purpose of that is to try to prevent impeachments that are just like on straight partisan lines or impeachments that are driven by uh, frivolous misconduct. So I think what you have here is clearly not frivolous misconduct. This could be very serious misconduct. Uh, what the framers were most concerned about in putting impeachment in the Constitution was the possibility that the awesome powers of the presidency could be put in the service of foreign powers. That's why bribery mm -hmm. uh, is one of the uh, article, uh, one of the pieces of conduct that you can impeach over. Uh, but, you know, there, there has to be a bipartisan moment if you're ever going to have an impeachment because it can't be done without both parties being satisfied that something so egregious that requires removal from office has happened. Uh, you know, Andy, Jonathan Turley said that at this point there is not enough evidence to have an impeachment vote, but he says there certainly is enough evidence to hold an impeachment inquiry. Uh, and that was an opinion that was backed up by Bruce Dubinsky, who's the forensic accountant from Florida, who's testifying there today on Capitol Hill. He was talking about all of the shell companies that Hunter Biden has and the money flows. Listen to how he put it. The term shell, as you would note, implies that the company is like an empty shell, lacking substance or real activity. Shell companies typically have no employees, no offices, no real operating businesses. They use P.O. boxes for mailing addresses. While I will note shell companies can be used for legitimate business activities, more often than not, they're associated with fraudulent activities. So he says that there could be some there there, and, and maybe there is no smoking gun just yet, Andy, but uh, Republicans insist that there's enough smoke here 
that there's got to be a gun around somewhere, and they're determined to turn over every rock to try to find it. Yeah, John, you know, I, I can't think of a single investigation that I ever was involved in, particularly money laundering or tax type investigations where things like shell companies would be very important, where I leapt from the premise that, oh, there's shell companies to say, you know, gee, I got to get right to the grand jury and indict this and then and then let's have a trial. But it was a very good reason to have an investigation in the first place. And I think that's the major point uh, that that uh, that Dubinsky made. I think it's the major important point that Jonathan made. There is stuff here that cries out to be investigated. But the reason you have an investigation is because you don't go from like zero to 100 in two seconds. You have to actually methodically go through what you have before you do something as serious as in, uh, accuse a president of something that's so serious he needs to be removed from office. That should not be something that we run headlong into. Andy, Nancy Mace, uh, the Republican from South Carolina, she had a moment where she used some pretty spicy language to call out Democrats on the committee for their dismissal of Republican criticism of President Biden's conduct related to his family's business dealings. She pointed to that 2017 deal with the Chinese company CEFC, alleging the deal involved making millions off of granting access to Joe Biden saying, quote, Hunter even arranged for Joe Biden to share office space with the CCP-aligned company CEFC. Did she make, or, or did she move the needle? Um, did she convince anybody uh, in that room who may have not been paying attention before with that? Well, you know, it, it made me think that maybe I was watching something from the Bronx instead of Washington, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, look, I, it, that stuff doesn't do it for me. I don't think... Um, if you have really strong evidence, I don't think it's ever wise to act like you need shock value. You let, you got to let the evidence sink, and you know to to throw epithets in about it uh, in in a way that people find startling is not going to make them pay attention unless you got the goods. And if you have the goods, you don't have to engage in that kind of stuff. So I, you know, look, I'm just I'm like an old guy. I I don't think that Congress. People in Congress ought to talk like that, but you know, what do I know? Maybe it maybe it grabs people, but it doesn't grab me. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.